Hey everybody, Adam here with Hometown Acres. Welcome back. We are back here with Matt from Firewood Guy. We just did a video on his firewood kiln drying process. And I told him at the end of that video, Matt, if you're ever doing anything cool up here that would make a good video, let me know. And you said? Every day we do something cool. <laughs> no. um, I actually went home, thought about it, and I said, I, I have a 12 cord kiln dried delivery and it's not something we usually do. And I thought it'd be awesome to have him right along. Yeah, so we're gonna follow along Matt here when he does a 12 cord firewood delivery, see what's all involved with that. Hope you guys stick around and enjoy. All right, Matt, so this is the semi truck. Explain to me some of the logistical things you gotta work through in delivering 12 cords of wood. Well, part of that we're gonna figure out because we don't <laughs> do this every day. But um, the plan is, I mean, this is a one of our tractor trailers. It's a, a 48 foot walking floor. Uh, meaning the floor moves that's how we load and unload it and uh, it's open top so we'll load part of it from the rear to cover the floor and then we'll load over the side once we've got the floor covered to fill the trailer the rest of the way um, we'll put 12 full cords on this for delivery tomorrow um, and we'll just see how it goes yeah so real quick let's take a look at this trailer because i mean i'm just thinking an open box trailer you know it's open on the top up there so obviously loading it would be easy just dump everything in but then how do you unload 12 cords out of a tractor trailer? Um, well, you can do it by hand, <laughs> which would take all day. Yeah, right. And then you could do like an end dump or some people call them coal buckets, like a dump trailer behind a semi. The danger with that is um, it just, you gotta, you gotta get so high and you gotta worry about power lines. You gotta worry about being level, being, being tipping over. And they don't, they don't pile it as high as the walking floors do when it comes off the trailer. So these are, we use these for delivering our wood chips and our mulch, and we've used them to haul firewood before, not this particular trailer, so we'll see how it works out, but they just, it stays just like this, nice and flat. The load walks on that floor as it comes out and piles up on the ground, so the, the truck never has to, you know, be up in the air where it's at risk of tipping over, um, and it, it's really, it's really neat. So these slats are the full length, so they're 48 feet long, and they you can walk a load in or out and how so it works each they're basically one by fours right and they're yeah. all independent of each other they're all independent of each other um and the way it would work on, on walking a load in or out is every third slat is connected to each other so this this row would move back then this row would move back then this row would move back and then they would all move together to move the load in or out. So it slides everything out, and then the friction of two of them holds the load in place while one moves back, and then these two will hold in place while this one moves back, and then once you got all three back, then you're I've, good. I've never seen anything like this before. I, I can't wait to see it in action. Yeah, before I ever, before I ever bought one or ever saw one, um, I thought walking floor meant like the slats like walked, you know, like this. And I thought, or some, they... some kind of conveyor system or. Right, yeah. right. And there's several different, this would be technically called like a live floor trailer. They make several different versions, but this is one of the most common ones for, for what we do. When you were explaining this to me over the phone, I was thinking of uh, those kits that you can get for a pickup bed where it's got a tarp on the bottom and a roll on the back that you kind of unroll it and it pulls the load out. Yes. Uh, same principle, just a lot more complex and totally different yeah different different scale. design so this is the, the nice thing about these is they have the ability to they push pretty hard as long as you have good friction on the floor so when you unload somewhere it piles the load up nice and high so that you're not stringing it out you know right 100 feet long now you said you primarily use this for you know mulch and wood chips and stuff how does it do because i'm thinking mulch okay you're not gonna get a whole lot of friction on the sides but with firewood you know, you might have it bunch up and kind of jam. Have you ever had that happen? No, I haven't. The only, the only challenge with the walking floors is, um, and the difference between firewood and mulch will be, uh, with mulch, we'll hang a tarp in the front called a sweep tarp, mm -hmm. so that the, the mulch actually grabs that tarp, pulls it off the clips in the front and like sweeps the floor as it comes out. Okay. If you don't run the tarp, you'll leave like an inch of material left on the floor because there's not enough friction to tie it all together so that it'll stay in place. Then you have to sweep the floor out. So with the firewood, we'll see. That's one of my one of my uh, worries is how much will be left on the floor for us to kick out or throw out after the delivery is all complete. All right. Well, I've never ridden in a semi truck before, so let's get this thing loaded up and we'll hit the road. All right. Sounds good.
All right, Matt, that doesn't look like no 12 cords in here. What's the uh, plan for loading the rest of it? Well, we just did this to, to help cover the floor because I, I don't want to drop firewood from 10 feet in the air straight down on this floor and, and risk damaging it. So we just covered it this way to be safe. And then we'll close the doors and we'll load over the side to fill it the rest of the way. So we are hitting the road here. We got about a two hour drive and uh, first time ever in the semi. Figured I'd bring you guys along and just kind of capture any interesting conversation Matt and I might have along the way. One thing that you said you wanted to do was to make this video even more interesting than it already is, is to pull across the scales. What are you estimating that this load weighs and then what can this truck actually haul? Uh, the truck can haul a gross truck and load 80,000 pounds. Uh, the truck weighs about 30, 31 to 32,000 pounds without anything in it. Uh, I believe this load will gross right around 76,000 is my estimate, but I wanted to check it just to see if I can, if I can haul more on a load, that's what I want to do so that I'm maximizing my, my volume and weight capacity. And we were talking about cords of firewood and kiln drying them and how much weight you lose from green wood to kiln dried wood. Would you, you said you actually have a pretty good idea of how much water comes out of a cord of wood. Yeah, I have, uh, when we first started kiln drying, I have a set of scales that we can weigh a whole half cord of wood at a time. And so we weighed it when it went in, and then we weighed it when it came out. 
and we lost 1,500 uh, pounds of water per quarter in one kiln run just in water weight. 1,500 pounds in one quart. In one quart of wood. I guess that would make sense because I know I've I've actually taken a third of a quart, one of those IBC totes, to a scale and weighed it before, and it was about I can't remember 1,500 or 1,600 pounds green for a third of a quart, which would mean about 4,500 pounds green. If you lose 1,500, then it's down to about 3,000 pounds for a full quart. Is that about kind of what you've seen, or yeah, it. I, our math comes out to about 34 to 3,600 pounds per cord, and okay. it all depends on what type of hardwood you're you're yeah. starting with and what its dry weight is. All of them carry different moisture levels naturally. Like a red oak is going to lose more water than than a cherry will. Yeah, I just figured we probably ought to have seatbelts <laughs> before on. the safety police tear us a new one. Do not wear a seatbelt. I tell you what, this is. You definitely sit up higher in this. I mean, no duh, but yeah. <laughs> but actually being up here, it's. I mean, you're up here. Yeah. The thing that I found most interesting when I went from driving my pickup truck to a semi was the the way that speed feels to you. So you'll be going 55 miles an hour in a semi, and when you look out, it does not look like you're going that fast. Really? Yeah. I was going to ask you, relatively speaking, to what you normally haul, is this heavy or light? No, this would be light. Usually, if I can get it in gear here, different trucks, different transmissions. Yeah. The uh, Normally, we haul 80,000 or a little bit above. Okay. Because uh, all of our products are bulk products, and we get paid by the ton, so the more tons equals larger yeah. paychecks. It's kind of funny when I, I did firewood all through high school, and when I was sitting between high school and my freshman year of college, I contemplated not going to college at all and just pursuing firewood. And I had a conversation with my dad, and he said, "Stay in the firewood business through college. It'll pay for your gas money. It'll put car insurance on your car. It'll get you back and forth to college." He said, "Then at least when you get out, you have a college degree." And you can decide then. And, and I remember having these feelings of, if I don't do it now, I'll have too many commitments. Yeah. It'll be too risky, and I'll not ever take the chance. But it gives you options. Yeah. Plus, it's probably made you a better business owner too. Absolutely. I, I wouldn't have done it a different way if I if I had a million opportunities. Yeah. I always, you know, I put a video together when we when I quit my accounting job to do YouTube and social media full time. And I said, it's weird walking away from something you spent the last 10, 15 years of your life working towards, but I'm not totally leaving it because a lot of those skills that I learned, I'm now applying to what I'm doing now. They make running the business side of YouTube easier. What are you doing? I'm 65 right now. Yeah, dude, that is wild. You're doing 65 and it feels like we're doing 40. Yeah. That like is... you look outside, everything's moving slow, it looks like. Yeah. You know, I, I've kind of noticed that too, like whenever you go from being in a pickup truck to being in like a little four-cylinder Honda Civic or something and you're on the highway and you're doing 60 and it feels like you're doing 120. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just because you're so close to the ground. Everything seems to be moving faster. Yeah. You know, I saw something somewhere that says that's why there's always traffic jams at tunnels because you get into a tunnel, the walls are much closer to you, everybody slams on their brakes. That makes a lot of sense. Some people might be wondering who's buying 12 quarts of firewood from you. Um, what type of customer is this that we're taking this to? I mean, is it some big conglomerate somewhere else that you know, you're taking to regularly or? No, this is a, just another supplier of firewood that's outside my normal delivery market. Um, we service restaurants in his area, but we don't service retail. Okay. And that's all he does is uh, he'll take a full cord, break it up into smaller quantities, and then he sells it to the homeowner that, that only wants a quarter of a cord or a, per, a third of a cord. And he actually offers a, a stacking service where I'll put it wherever they want and they don't have to deal with anything uh, other than letting them in to do what he's got to do. Now, for reference, what I typically can get in my dump trailer is loose thrown in one full cord. So this is 12 times what I would normally deliver to somebody. If somebody wants a cord and a half, I can do that, but I've got to stack it. Yeah. Now, from my perspective, I mean, it looked like a well-oiled machine because you had 
12 cords loaded into the back of this semi in two hours is what that took. So from a time standpoint, it, it was pretty quick, but you've got to factor five people times two hours. So it really right. took 10, 10 man, man hours, hours to get that done, which, you know, loading a semi truck is not as easy as loading a dump trailer because you've got to have a high lift wheel loader to get up over the sides. And uh, I did like the fact that your, what, what was the bucket on, on the wheel loaders that you said it? it hydraulic roll out or a high tip, they call it a high tip bucket. Yeah, so I don't know if any of you guys picked that up in the footage. If you're not looking for it, you might not have noticed it, but the buckets on the wheel loaders actually tip up instead of tipping down. And what that does is it gives you more clearance to dump into things like semi trucks. Yeah, when we started, um, those buckets are very expensive. And when we started, we just had the traditional loader bucket and we had uh, mafia blocks set up or coffin blocks, people might call them, yeah. and a dock. And then we could only load trucks from one location. And we'd have to run with the product from wherever it was to that location to load a truck. And with those hydraulic high tips, you can load a truck anywhere. Right. So if you were out hauling material off a job somewhere, you just move the loader there, bring your trucks in, load them up and haul them out. You don't have that extra you know, space of a dock. You don't have the extra material of a dock. Could you imagine loading this semi by hand? <laughs> I actually can because <laughs> when I started with my first firewood processor, that's what we did. And, and we had we had a farm elevator conveyor and that's how we filled the semi-trailer, but the guy that brought the trailer couldn't leave the truck. So he would drop the trailer and we have the processor set up in one spot. We conveyed it kind of on a diagonal so we could fill the back of the trailer yeah. from one location. But then once it piled up, we had to go up there and hand throw it to the front of the trailer until the trailer was completely full. So another thing we were talking about was uh, this guy, because he's buying in bulk, He's buying 12 cords, which is more than you typically deliver. So I'm assuming he's getting some kind of bulk discount pricing, but with the logistics of delivering 12 cords, does it make sense to offer him a discount or do you have to charge more because there's, it's more difficult to move this quantity of wood? Yeah, it's uh, it's kind of a blend of both. Um, we start with a bulk discount for the volume and then that is somewhat outweighed by the distance and the fuel of the delivery. So this delivery costs more money from a trucking standpoint than a little delivery truck. And I think a lot of people need to realize that, that the firewood business is separate from your delivery business. That's correct. So basically one business is getting a discount, but he's paying more because we were taking this two hours away and it's 12 quarters. Right. So two separate businesses is getting a discount on one paying more for the other. Uh, so in total, it probably is about a wash. About a net wash, yeah. Yeah. And it works for him and his market because, uh, you know, we're not close to where you and I are. We're not close to any major cities. So the price of our cord of wood is significantly less than what they can get for the price of their face cord or their quarter cord delivery on a full cord basis. Yeah. So they might be buying it. Maybe. He's probably buying it from me and then doubling or more his money which is completely okay and completely fine. Yeah. I'm not in his market. He's servicing a customer in a way that I'm not willing to or don't want to. And it gives you a way to move 12 cords of product. 12 cords at one time and fill in the gaps in our kiln schedule where we don't have retail deliveries or we don't have our regular customers. Now, speaking of pricing on firewood, we were also talking about this too. Uh, you know, every once in a while you get the customer that the first question out of their mouth is, uh, how much is it for the cord? And Matt and I both agree we're not selling to people that cost is the most important thing. Quality right. is the most important thing for the people that we're trying to sell to. And, uh, you know, you, you get the guy that calls in and says, oh, you're, you're too expensive. I can get it from some guy on Facebook Marketplace for 150 bucks a cord or 200 bucks a cord. And my response to that is always, be my guest because I've done it before. I've gone to the guy on Facebook Marketplace that's selling firewood for 180 bucks a cord, and uh, you know he'll bring you a pickup truck load for 60 bucks, but he gets there and there's 
shovels and rakes and leaf blowers in the bottom of the bed of the pickup truck so that the truck bed isn't even full. There's pieces this big, there's pieces this big, uh, there's pieces you know this big around, there's pieces this big around, it's not dry. And so I bought $60 worth of firewood that I couldn't resell. I, it was basically just wood for my wood stove. And because uh, my thought was, oh, if, if I can buy it that cheap, I can turn around and flip it and sell it for more. And I, I couldn't sell the junk. So anybody that comes to me and says, I can get it for X, Y, and Z somewhere else, go ahead. Let me know how that goes. See what you get. Yeah, I have a very similar experience, a very similar policy. Uh, if the first question out of their mouth is how much is the wood, it's usually we're not going to do business. Uh, we, we need to be concerned about things like volume, species. And how long is it? Are they all the same length? And moisture content. Yeah, moisture content. I've had customers, you know, I, I bought wood and, and half of it won't fit in my stove. And I'm said, well, I guess you can cut it down then. And it does give you an opportunity to educate and maybe get a new customer because maybe they don't know. They, You know, if you first start shopping for something new that you've never bought before, I get it. Price is probably the first and foremost thing on your mind. And maybe there's an opportunity to educate them about species and volume and moisture content and, and why somebody else might be charging less. Um, but you know, even even those guys that are selling out of their pickup trucks that are selling wood for $150 a cord, they don't understand the numbers. They don't understand cost. And I mean, those guys, I call it trading money, right? They're, they're trading fuel and depreciation and all of that stuff for the money that they're getting back. They're not actually making any profit. You know, they, they deliver a pickup truck load of, of firewood and somebody hands them 75 bucks and they think they made money, but they're not factoring in what it cost them to make it. No, they're, they're, they're simply after the cash. Yeah. And that's it. And, and that's okay, I guess. And those guys never stay in it long. They do it for a year or two and they realize, whoa, this is a lot of work. Oh, well, my trucks wore out. Oh, I need a new chainsaw. Well, there's no money for that. Yeah. Well, I'm not buying a new chainsaw and then they're out of the firewood business. And it's, and from the customer standpoint, when they're buying firewood, they don't know, a lot of them don't know the difference between oak or cherry or hickory or pine even, you know, yeah. or quaking aspen. I've had customers that buy a cord of hardwood, and I guess technically you could call quaking aspen hardwood. or It is could, the softest of the hardwoods. Right. You could call poplar a hardwood. Technically it is. They're not lying when they sell it that way. but They don't make great firewood. No, and I, I am always concerned about what do I want to burn? What do I want to experience when I'm using my own firewood? And I am a user of my own product, and I'm, a, I'm like the biggest critic. So I don't put poplar in. I don't put quaking aspen in. We invariably do get it in our loads, and when we do, it gets sorted out. We either process it for kiln fuel, or it ends up going through our chipper and gets recycled into biomass fuel or the, the chips for the board plant. That's another thing I wanted to talk about. So when we were loading the truck, I flew around and gave them a quick aerial tour of the, the yard there, and I was blown away by the number of piles of slab wood you have sitting there because I, I was looking down and I saw one pile you know one yard full of slabs and then I pan to the left and there's a whole nother yard full of slabs the thing that blew me away is you said all of those slabs because when I was here three years ago you had a yard full of slabs so I just assumed that you were still working through that material and you said no you flip that every, every single year, year. Yep, every year so we'll start in the in the fall we're, we're bringing wood at a constant pace it comes in every day about Usually, it's at a minimum 100 tons a day, and it comes in up to 200 tons a day, depending on the production of the sawmills that we service. And and the wood that doesn't go through the chipper goes out back, and we stockpile for our mulch production. And all of the wood that we stockpile typically gets gets consumed by August when mulch season is kind of wound up for the year. Yeah. Now, uh, you said you've got two of your bigger customers that buy one buys wood chips and the other buys the mulch. Uh, who are they? Because I thought that was pretty interesting that some guy local here is a, a major producer for some of these bigger companies. Yeah, so we do the chips. Our largest customer on the wood chips is a Georgia Pacific, which everybody's heard of them. 
Right. Um, they make our wood chips into medium density fiberboard. Um, there would be the highest volume buyer on the wood chip side. And then on the mulch side, it's the Scotts Company. Everybody's also heard of them. Yeah. The, the bag mulch you buy at Home Depot and Lowe's. Now, you're not supplying to every Scotts bag of mulch that goes out there, right? No, no, absolutely not. We serve one regional manufacturing facility for Scotts that specifically distributes to the Northeast. Yeah, because um, by the time you take your mulch from your plant, send it to Scotts, there's no way that they could possibly ship it to California, sell it to California and still make a profit. So they've got to have different plants and distribution centers all around the US. You're just supplying one of those and you're not even the only supplier for that plant. Correct, yeah, we're, we're one of four or five suppliers for that plant. I'm not sure, on, I mean, that's their business, not mine. Right. I'm just going off the trucks that we see go in and out. And um, they, they certainly buy a lot of wood. There's no <laughs> doubt about that. Yeah. All right, so we just ran through the scales. Matt, what was the damage? She weighed 69,000 pounds. So what you see in your estimate was about 76,000 pounds? It was. So and, uh, price is right rules, you're doing pretty good then. Well, <laughs> yeah, right. Close without going over. Yeah. Um, the wood must be a lot drier than I thought it was. And uh, this truck is the lightest truck I have. So I may have overcompensated for the, the light weight. So what is that? And this is going to be some put you on the spot quick math in your head but would you say that the truck weighs empty usually about thirty-one thousand, depending on a multitude of factors fuel being one of them right um, so then if you're at sixty-nine thousand minus thirty-one thousand, what is that thirty-eight thousand pounds of firewood I might have been a CPA, but I'm not real good with basic arithmetic. <laughs> yeah. As we've got calculators in Excel. Yeah. So I think that's right. 38,000 pounds divided by 12. What would that be? A little over 3,000 pounds a quart, right? Is that right? Yeah. yeah. 38,000 pounds divided by 12 quarts. I don't know what the exact number is, but I know. 3,000 pounds a quart would be 36,000 pounds. So it's a hair over 3,000 pounds a quart for kiln dried firewood. Yep. This is what happens when you put two accountants in a truck with loaded full of firewood. And put one of them trying to shift gears and merge <laughs> onto the interstate, ask a math question. <laughs>
we just got back from the 12 cord firewood delivery. I think that's going to about wrap this one up. If you have any questions for Matt, uh, he's been reading all the comments from the last video we did with the kiln uh, about the truck, the trailer, the equipment, any of the things that he does here in the wood yard, leave them in the comments below. He'll be monitoring the comments and uh, possibly responding to people. But I do know you had one that you wanted to address from the last video. Yeah, I, I see this opportunity with Adam as a, as a good situation to educate people and the public about kind of the process of making firewood, everything that goes into it, the investment, the time, the energy. And uh, one of the comments was about the amount of tra uh, chaff or uh, small bark pieces that are in the firewood. And, and most of that comes from the kiln drying process. It goes in the kiln, the wood shrinks, the bark loosens up, it comes off the wood, and it's going straight from our baskets into, uh, into this semi-trailer. But most of our firewood that leaves here leaves as a finished product stacked on a pallet where all of that is sorted out and doesn't end up with the end customer. This bulk customer we delivered the trailer to uh, does the same thing. He's getting the bulk delivery. He's sorting that out by hand and delivering it in much smaller quantities to his finished customer. And it just didn't, it doesn't make a lot of sense to add a lot of cost to a product that, you know, we want to run it across a tumbler when we're already going to be handling it and screening it and sorting that out anyhow. Yeah. So we offer that product stacked customer doesn't have to do anything. Wheels in the garage, we take the stretch wrap plastic off and they're ready to use it. They don't have to deal with a pile of wood in the driveway, they don't have to deal with any mess. And it's really, that's the way most of our wood leaves. And so that the trash or the chaff is really not a concern at all. Um, and if there's anything else you guys think you might wanna see, send it in the comments and we'll see if we can make a video on it. Yeah. All right, anyway, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, give me a big thumbs up, click that subscribe button, and we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.